Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In this video, I'm going to talk about a resume that I used to get my first real job. This was not a part-time job, it's not an internship, but this was a full-time job that I currently have as a software engineer. This is very important because when you start learning to code, it's not just about learning to code, but it's building up that experience, building up that portfolio if you don't have experience to give you clout to be able to not only get the interviews, but be able to get the job. Now in this video, I'm going to show you my resume that I used to get my initial job. And I'm also going to talk about what if you don't have any experience, what can you do on your resume to make it look more appealing. Also, the resume I'm going to show you is my old resume. I'm in the process of redoing mine to reflect my current position that I had. With that being said, if you're new to this channel, my name is Paul and I talk about switching careers into web development late in life. So if this is something that interests you, consider subscribing. All right, guys, before we jump into my computer and before I show you my resume, what I want to tell you guys is that this is a process that takes time. You cannot rush through getting a job, especially when you're switching careers and this is something brand new that you're doing. You have to meet certain qualifications that will allow you to get the job in the first place. And this is why I tell people it's not as easy as some of these people online make it out where after three months, you're going to get a job because it's not just about learning to code and being able to actually do the things you say you can do. It's also marketing yourself and building a presence. The days of like leaving your resume and then getting a job are over. You have to proactively sell yourself. I mean, there's a reason why I have this YouTube channel. There's a reason why I have a LinkedIn profile and there's a reason why I have a blog. I actually starting a new blog from scratch because I want to show you what I'm doing to kind of build my authority in the field of development. I want to make sure there's stuff online that shows that I'm a developer. This is something that I do and talk about. I used to have a portfolio site. I took it down because I'm in the process of rebuilding it. And in other videos, I'll show you how I'm going to do that and how I do that. But today's video, it's all about the resume. Let's just jump in onto my computer and I'm going to show you what I mean here. Okay, guys, here we are at my computer. I'm going to right away go, look, I hit my phone number, but this is my real name. I am going to show you my real name just so you guys know that I'm not trying trying to trick you guys. I'm a real person. I have the same struggles as you guys have. And here's my resume. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go over my resume and some of the reasons why I did what I did. So you should have your name, your address, your email, but then you want to have this objective section. There's plenty of resumes that I saw that jump right into their professional experience and they don't have these two areas, objective and tech used. Imagine if I didn't have this. Imagine I just had Gracie Jiu Jitsu Manager, the Hartford Selling Insurance, Super Kids Karate. Imagine that that's what they saw. That would not be relevant to a job as a web developer. It wouldn't help me. So you do need to have something that shows your experience. But I'll come back to this in a second. Norris here for my objection. I say you basically want to cater your resume to the position you want. So in this particular case, I wanted to become a React front end developer. And this is what I tailored to. That's why it's says to obtain a position as a React front-end developer in a professional setting that will enable me to learn new skills and give me the ability to utilize the ones I have acquired through my education and work experience. Bam, right to the point, people know what I want. You need this section, very important. Next, right away, not beating around because I don't want to divert them to my experience, especially where it's not really relevant in some of these cases. I want to make sure I give them relevant information right away. I show I do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React.js, Redux, GraphQL. I know Git, NPM, and VS Code. All these things were requirements for me to be productive at my job. I did not just make these up. This is actually what I've seen in a lot of applications that I was applying. And by the way, these are the technologies I spent time learning and making sure that I understood these. In any case, if I were to have questions asked about any of the aspects of the technologies 
used, I was prepared to answer them. Now, here I go to my professional experience. And now I was betting on the fact that this position here was going to have some clout because it's relevant to the field. So I worked at Greenwich Point Marketing from June 2019 and I was a front developer and I kind of gave the little blurb of what I did. I worked alongside senior developers and clients to create and customize UI for WordPress custom website utilizing HTML, CSS, JavaScript and PHP as it pertains to WordPress. And then I just mentioned some of the customers we had, real estate, restaurants and other businesses. Now, notice how I'm repeating myself, HTML, CSS and JavaScript, relevant stuff that I am looking to apply and use. Now, this here, Gracie Sports Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the Hartford, Super Kids Karate, I used to own this business. That's all irrelevant. That's not going to help me. The point is you want to make your resume relevant to the position you're going. What I should have done and which I didn't and in my new resume, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move these internships right below Greenwich Point Marketing. Maybe not even have this at all in my resume. In the future, it would be my current position, then Greenwich Point Marketing, and then it will jump into my internship where I worked for Fluid Logic Design two years unpaid internship and then I had Greenwich Point Marketing four months unpaid internship and notice I have HTML, CSS, JavaScript with React and Redux all relevant stuff to the position that I am applying for so I think when I redo this resume I'm actually going to remove all this stuff and I'm just going to put my current position my last position and then my two internships then I put other skills all this stuff here in this situation is not relevant so i did it just for extra curriculum credit add other things that i do for my resume because i didn't feel i had enough experience but i will probably keep this section because it's not going to hurt me much you know other skills i have soft skills customer service everybody likes to hear customer service type of stuff anything that you talked about communication you know conflict resolution that's an interesting one what does that mean well <laughs> i solve conflicts or resolve conflicts you know, we a force. I don't know. No, I'm just, it doesn't matter. Whatever. I'm just going on attention here. And then I talked about all this other stuff I do. I speak Russian fluently. So I have that here. I have my volunteer experience. And again, this is just nice, kind of like whatever. I don't think people care about this stuff, but so I'm probably going to delete it in the next way. So this is my resume and this is what helped me get a job. Notice how it has nothing about my education. Why? Because I didn't graduate out of college. You know, I didn't do that. And so I didn't want to say I went to school only for like six months and then dropped out. It's irrelevant. It doesn't help me get a job. So if you don't have the education, don't put it. And if you do have the education, put it right afterwards, this stuff here. You need to show this stuff i saw a resume it was pretty good resume but this person they didn't have any relevant experience for web development they had work experience but had nothing to do with web development and then the stuff that was relevant like stuff like this they says they had it somewhere on the bottom here like hidden that i had to read through all this stuff to get down there no no you want to be like right up front here and that's the most important part. So this is the resume I use to get a job. Now, I just mentioned the things that I would do differently. I would keep this the same. I would move my internships more up front here, right below this area here. And of course, add my current position here that I've been working and maybe remove all this irrelevant stuff that's no longer necessary for me. Now, if I didn't have any of this, and this is something that if you don't feel like you have strong enough experience to get an entry level job, you have to make it up somehow. So if you don't have internships, try to get an internship somewhere, even if it's free, totally worth it because it looks good on your resume. And if you don't have that experience, I went on and Googled finding a resume with no experience. And there's a guy here, Ethan something, he shared his which I really liked because he did not have job experience. But Norris, he did a great job here. His contact information, his web development skills, he kind of talked about what he did here. I wouldn't put one year or less than a year or whatever. I just put the experience here. That's fine. And then here he talked about recent projects he worked on and he has links to his portfolio. And this is where portfolio becomes important because it helps to give you more clout when you don't have experience. And notice how he just basically talked about his personal projects that he did, the technologies used. He has a link to the portfolio or GitHub that you can go to. Now, if you're building a portfolio, I wouldn't send them to 
let's look what he has here okay this is wonderful you see he sends you to a working app that's what you want you want your resume to have links to things that work so that's what you want on your resume if you don't have work experience you want to use your projects you want to have links in your projects that lead people to working examples of the things you built no one wants to spend time looking through your code as a hiring manager they don't have hours they have few minutes to make the best decision they can and then here he shows his education and notice how he puts his relevant education first even though it was not uh, school it was free code camp online he puts this as experience why because it's relevant to web development the job that he wants to do then he put his other major here afterwards which is good you know he went to university I didn't so he is able to put this experience but notice it's below the relevant experience and then he also showed his work experience what he did he talked about his teaching and stuff like that so notice all the relevant stuff has has to go in the front and not at the beginning so what I'm going to do for my next resume is I'm going to apply the combination of things like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my objective I'm going to have my tech used for my professional experience I'm going to have my current job that I have I'm going to move my internships up I'm going to remove this at this point on because it's not relevant for any web development jobs I get and then I'm going to afterwards add a section similar to this which will have my recent projects that people could see that I worked on as well and so let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or other questions or if you have created resumes that work for you I'd love to hear about your experience I think it's going to be great for everyone so what I'm going to do I'm going to jump back on the camera all right I think this video went a little bit too long but what I want to say to you guys when you're switching careers or you're starting your career you're young old it doesn't matter what it comes down to is that if you're just starting out you're starting from the bottom and you have to have realistic expectations of the work required to get an entry-level job it's a lot of work instead of thinking about how much money you're gonna make or when you're gonna get your job you should be thinking about are you taking the right steps are you doing the right things to get you to where you're going it's a process of thinking ahead the future that at some point you will have to go and interview and get jobs so you have to prepare your resume you have to prepare your portfolio for your resume if you have no experience and anyway i hope the stuff i showed you here in this video was helpful let me know in the comments if i miss anything or if you have something to add and i truly try to make the most honest videos for you guys talking my experience because i don't want anybody to feel and get caught up in the hype and not realize that everything you want to do that's worthwhile is hard so i just want to share with you the difficulties that I had it took me a long time to get my job and that is still the reason why I work hard every day to make sure that I keep growing my skills anyway thanks for watching if you like this video like if you hated it for whatever reason I get it everybody wants to hate once in a while but at least let me know in the comments below what I could do better next time with that being said I'll see you guys later